must be our goal and our guide. And all that we strive for as a human family, dignity and hope, progress and prosperity, depends on peace. But peace depends on us. Good morning to you and thank you so much for joining us. This is Good Morning Africa. My name is Miriam Guto. It is a pleasure to have you on board. Joining me on the panel uh, from uh, Nairobi is uh, Samuel Tawish. Samuel, a very good morning to you. Uh, good morning to you, Miriam Ogutu, and indeed everyone who is watching this program this uh, this morning in Africa and the rest of the world. It's an honor to be part of this conversation. All right. Nice to have you. So I'll just go quickly uh, through the leading newspapers this morning in the country. And the Star newspaper, the main headline, why Lieutenant General Badi or Ogola will be next military chief. The next military chief must come from the Air Force because his predecessors uh, came from the Army and Navy in rotational system. That is the main story. And then just on the side, uh, there says, Raila, how I will transform, modernize a civil service. And Kangongo's family promises decent burial despite delay. And then up there, Kalonzo's staff options as WIPA meets over NASA exit decision. And then the standard newspaper, the main headline, Jubilee Night, uh, talks to Clip Ruto Party in a five-hour meeting in Nairobi. Nearly 30 members of parliament raise concerns over President's party's dwindling fortunes and resolve to start campaigns to connect, to reconnect with members and check the DP's United Democratic Alliance Party. The story is on page six of the standard newspaper and had times for parents in back to school rush governors in 2022 vote hand tunisia hit by protest and malkia hold on to a hope and then um after rehab, Jim Watt now faces rejection. The story is on page three of uh, the Standard newspaper. And uh, just below there, how Raila civil service will look like. ODM leader unpacks his thoughts on a modern day civil service that will have linkages to the private sector and think tanks to allow civil servants to engage in strategic thinking as they pursue routine work. The story is on page 10 of the Standard newspaper. We turn our attention to the Daily Nation and the main headline Fresh Huddles as schools reopen and then and Cyrus Jirongo, a common figure in court corridors, and why Kome wants a court to drop the case against Uhuru. Uh, the story is on back page, and then likely casualties of coalition split. And uh, we have we see names uh, over there and county staff awash with money after hitch with payroll. Very well. So let's just start with this why Kome wants court to drop the case against Uhuru. The story is on back page of uh, the Daily Nation and find out what's really uh, happening. And Chief Justice Martha Kome and the Judicial Service Commission have asked the High Court to dismiss a case uh, filed by activist group Katiba Institute uh, seeking to compel President Kenyatta to approve nomination of six judges he left out in the, his latest judicial appointments last month. The President omitted six judges from a list of 40 individuals nominated to top courts uh, two years ago. He approved the appointment of 34 judges, leaving out Justice George Odunga, Joel Ngugi, Agri Muchelule, and Weldon Career, who were expected to be um, elevated to the Court of Appeal. High Court Registrar Judith Omangi and Chief Magistrate, Magistrate Evans McCurry were also barred from taking up their positions as High Court judges uh, during the swearing-in of the Court of Appeal President uh, Daniel Masinga last month. Justice Kome reiterated her call on the President to appoint the six judges, stating that all persons nominated by JSC must be appointed in accordance with Kenyan's law. 
and now of course the story continues and now we see that uh, the judiciary now is uh, is in uh, the petition by Katiba Institute, um, you know, the judiciary wants that to be dropped. Uh, quite a, a turnaround there, Sam also wish. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Miriam, for that question. Um, I think uh, Martha Kome is now realizing that uh, there's a, a new approach that she has to engage in as far as uh, the relationship between the three arms of government and particularly between the judiciary and the executive is concerned uh, because again i'm sure she's getting into her sense uh, it's getting into her sense rather uh, that the kind of uh, tussle the push and pull the supremacy battle uh, is not serving um, the, is not serving the interests of the judiciary and specifically if they were to engage in the fight uh, between the judiciary and the executive or to the extent uh, with to the extent of fighting with the parliament it is probably the judiciary that is going to suffer and eventually the ordinary monanchi who is going to be compromised in terms of lack of service delivery coming from the judiciary. So I think uh, Martha Kome is uh, trying as much as she can to live up to the expectations of Kenyans and to live up to the promise that she made when she was being, of course, uh, interviewed for this position. And I remember her actually saying that uh, she will be... Uh, her, her engagement with the executive or any other arm of government will be a consultative one and not one that is uh, kind of, um, uh, I mean, uh, combative or something that is grandstanding kind of that we have seen uh, with her predecessor, that is um, uh, Dr. David Maraga. So I think this is the right approach, and Miriam, looking on to uh, the recent happenings in the country, Martha Kome and the, the judiciary for that matter must have realized uh, that at long last they may not win uh, if they were to engage the executive in this kind of uh, fights that they have been engaging in. Remember, it is the executive that apportions a budget for the judiciary to, to do its operations. Uh, remember, the judiciary also needs as much goodwill uh, from the public as they do from the executive and parliament. And so they cannot live like an island. They need one other. They need to be interdependent. They need to rely on one another for them to, uh, to be able to provide these services to the people. So I think it's a step in the right direction. Uh, there shouldn't be any reason for her to backtrack on this. Uh, this is a, a way forward. This is what Kenyans really want. We would want to see all these arms of government, all organs of government really working uh, seamlessly because the main uh, purpose and objective of all these organs of government is to provide services to the ordinary monarchy. So if we are watching as ordinary people, these organs of government engaging in fights that do not necessarily uh, matter or do not um, uh, do not add value to the ordinary monarchy, then it tells us that maybe there are other hidden uh, motives or agendas that make or inform such kind of fights. So I think it's a step in the right direction, especially in restoring the relationship between the executive and in particular President Huru Kenyatta and the judiciary, Miriam, I submit. All right. And uh, she had also initially said she did not know why the head of state cherry picked the judges and that uh, she had no part to play in the constitutional process. But in what appears to be a turnaround on her stand and departure from the leadership style of her predecessor, David Maraga, Justice Kome has now asked the High Court to dismiss the case filed by Katiba Institute, which seeks to force President Kenyatta to complete the appointment. That, I think, is is quite interesting. All right, so let's just uh, move on with the other stories on uh, the front pages there. And fresh huddles as schools reopen. Parents, teachers and school administrators worry about congestion, congestion and COVID-19 infections as children begin the new school year today, with the secondary school population expected to increase by 400,000 students compared to last year. It will be left to the ingenuity of head teachers to safely fit learners in the available space. I don't even know if that is possible. If we know, especially on our public schools, that it's already overcrowded. And now this issue of social distance, and I don't want to, uh, you know, make parents anxious there, but these are the realities that we have to deal with. Uh, are we likely to see a surge of numbers? Uh, certainly, Miriam. And I think um, our concentration as a, as a, as a nation uh, should have been on how to expand uh, our infrastructure, especially in the learning facilities in the country, uh, because we cannot expect uh, that uh, with every elapsing day or months or years that we are going to have any decreased numbers in as far as new admissions are concerned, leave alone uh, the current numbers that we have in our schools. So I think the concentration on the stakeholders, uh, teachers, uh, parents, and even government itself to, uh, to find out 
how they can uh, expand the infrastructure in our schools, medium, uh, and not necessarily even the, the primary schools or secondary. I think even in the universities and colleges, uh, especially in the face of the COVID-19 pandemic, that really calls for this social distancing. Uh, it is not even possible uh, that we may achieve this with the current infrastructure that we have. So uh, we need to have a, a broad kind of approach and really see how we can be able uh, to accommodate uh, one, because we cannot say that because we do not have enough infrastructure at the moment, therefore we are going to ask some student to stay away from school or the new ad admissions are not going to take place simply because we do not have enough space or infrastructure to accommodate the same. We need to get out of the comfort zone and think outside the box really. How is it how is it possible that we are going to uh, increase this infrastructure and not just for the sake of it better infrastructure for that matter so that we can accommodate our learners in the uh, in the learning institutions media all right very well and then we move our attention to the star newspaper and um up there, Balancing Act, Kalonzo's uh, tough options as wiper meets over NASA exit decision. The story is on page seven of uh, this Star newspaper. Let's just uh, see what kind of headache Kalonzo, a uh, wiper leader, could be facing. And wiper leader Kalonzo Musyoka faces a tough balancing act on his presidential ambitions as the party's top organ meets to decide on their NASA coalition status. The party is set to hold the National Executive Committee meeting this morning to decide on whether wiper will pull out of NASA to pave the way for a new uh, alliance before I even go further. Uh, I know they're meeting this morning. What is likely to come out of that meeting? And, uh, you know, a divorce from NASA? Or what, what do you think will happen? <laughs> uh, Miriam, uh, last time, and I think I've said this many times, there's reality in the politics and uh, it's unfortunate that most of, most of our politicians want to live outside this reality or they want to live in denial. Uh, one for a fact is that uh, Kalonzo Msioka has come out uh, not once, not twice, that one, he will not, um, of course, play second fiddle to Raila Odinga and if they have to work together, then it's uh, probably Raila Odinga's time to support him for the presidency. Uh, when you come into the possibility of him working with William Ruto, he's even vowed and taken an oath almost uh, that uh, he can never work with Deputy President William Ruto uh, for reasons well known to him. So, Miriam, uh, I will say uh, that Kalonzo Msioka is one person whom, uh, as has been <laughs> branded in quote unquote watermelon, someone who you can't quite tell what is his true position when it comes to, uh, comes to uh, making a decision. And that is why you should not be surprised that uh, probably. Uh, Kalonzo Msioka may not, after all, even pull out of NASA. They went into a meeting last time. They retweeted the four. I think the four of them, the yeah, the four of them, um, Saliam Davadi of ANC, Moses Otangula of, uh, of course, Ford Kenya, Kalonzo himself of Wiper, and Gideon Moy of Kanu. They met and agreed. Uh, that the first step forward, uh, I think it was the three of the three parties that, of course, formed the NASA coalition alongside ODM, um, without, of course, Kanu. Uh, they agreed that the first step for them to uh, now, uh, I mean, uh, formalize this union in the One Kenya Alliance is one to disengage with NASA. So they are, they seem to have agreed in principle that this is going to be the way forward. So when ANC decides to sit down with its uh, a parliamentary to have a parliamentary group of its elected leaders and made a decision to actually uh, get out of the NASA marriage. Alonso Msioka decides to retreat, and uh, I mean, he's buying time. So in itself tells you that this is a person who is completely undecided. So he has left the likes of Musaliam Davadi, mm -hmm. Moses Wetangula, in an awkward position because NASA coalition was formed by four uh, parties, ODM, ANC, Ford, Kenya, and WIPA. And uh, according to the uh, to the agreement that was uh, the pre-election agreement that was deposited at the register of the political parties, uh, it was agreed, or it is actually captured in that particular uh, agreement, that uh, the coalition will cease to exist if three of the four uh, parties really uh, exit uh, that uh, particular marriage. And, and therefore, if uh, ANC, Ford, Kenya, and WIPA were to exit, then NASA would have ceased to exist. But now you have WIPA, which is coming out, which is backtracking on, on a decision that they unanimously agreed, mm. that we all want to walk out of NASA so that it, does, it ceases to exist. So in itself tells you that Kalonzo is one undecided, and second, he knows he cannot stand on his own, even as, in as much as he would wish to stand on his own, that he really needs um, other players, and formidable for that matter, for him to remain relevant as we head into 2022 general election. And I think in his own estimation, mm -hmm. 
and even maybe in the inner sanctums of Waipa Party, uh, the greatest person who can be a greatest asset, even if you are, they were to form any coalition, it should have an inclusion or a card or ODM for that matter. And therefore, Kalonzo, I do not expect that Kalonzo is going to pull out of NASA, mm -hmm. not anytime soon, Miriam. Really? And the way I think last week we were having the same conversation, and I think after a meeting of the One Kenya Alliance, they said that uh, their decision to leave NASA was... Uh, you know, that is something they had agreed on and they are not going back uh, in... Uh, listen, you know. Miriam, listen, Miriam, you remember <laughs> even the person who read out that particular, um, the, 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 I mean, how do I put it, the agreement or yes. kind of uh, the declaration. agreement that they had, uh -huh. the declaration, that is, thank you so much for that, the uh -huh. declaration was why for Secretary General, uh, mm -hmm. that is Senator for uh, Makweni Mutula Kilonzo Jr., uh, so, and uh, Kalonzo Musioka is his party leader. And remember also there's an aspect of sharing of slots in the National Assembly mm -hmm. that is in the committees and the, uh, uh, the highly coveted Parliamentary Service Commission, I believe, is it. Um, and, and therefore, WIPA has members in this particular uh, committees, uh, including even the minority leader, I believe, um, I mean, Mutula Kilonzo Jr. is a deputy minority whip, if I'm not very wrong, or mm -hmm. the minority whip in the Senate. We have, um, I mean, Mbui, who is MP for Katiani, is a deputy minority, minority in the National Assembly. And you also have others. Is it Borabu MP, Momani or some, some Momani or somebody? I don't, I can't quite remember the name. Who is also serving in the Parliamentary Service Commission? Mm -hmm. So how do you expect these people really? Because the effect of them withdrawing from the NASA coalition They'll have is that they are going also positions. yeah yes. to relinquish or to leave this mm -hmm. uh, position. So I do not think that NASA, uh, uh, WIPA leaders or WIPA politicians are ready really to to leave out these positions at least before 2022 million. Mm -hmm. But also speaking of One Kenya Alliance, we know the last time also we were doing this story, there's also a division in One Kenya Alliance with Wetangula and Gideon Moy having no problem working with Raila Utinga should that opportunity present itself, but uh, uh, Kalozo Musioka and Mudavadi are the ones who are a bit adamant uh, on uh, not wanting to work uh, with Raila unless Raila uh, plays the second fiddle, which we know is impossible. I don't know. I, I, I don't see a scenario where that can really happen. Uh, so there has been some, when you listen to Mudavadi and sometimes, uh, you know, but Kalonzo the other day came and said even Ruto is not an option for him. But Mudavadi, could you think he's a, a perhaps there's somebody there uh, pulling on the strings uh, for him and, and maybe he's also looking at another option out of, out of NASA and also out of one Kenya alliance. Maybe he's looking for another alliance with another political a bigwig. Uh, Miriam, you have to understand that uh, all these uh, politicians, say for Gideon Moy, have been in the political scene for quite some time. Kalonzo Msioka himself he has been an MP, I think, from the 80s up to now. He's been a politician, an active one for that matter. And so is Moses Wetangula, and so is Musalia Mdavadi, who was plucked right from the University of Nairobi when his father died to uh, actually to contest for the parliamentary seat in Sabatia, if I'm not very wrong, in Vihiga, uh, the current Vihiga county. Uh, Miriam in itself tells you really that these are politicians who have been in this game for quite some time and they know how to play their cards. They know how to uh, raise their stakes, especially when it comes to bargaining. So the first thing for you to actually raise your stakes is by declaring that you'll be contesting uh, for presidency. Uh, you remember there's a saying that you have to aim for the moon even if you fail, you fall among the stars. And I think that is basically what these politicians are doing. You cannot begin uh, by aiming at the stars because when you fail to, to hit the star, then you'll fall um, nowhere. So I think what these people are doing, they're basically trying to raise their stakes mm -hmm. by first declaring that I'm going for this seat and nothing is going to uh, actually to uh, discourage or to demotivate me uh, from pursuit to contest for the presidency. In itself, actually, uh, actually raises the bargaining power of that particular individual or that voting bloc or constituency. Because when Mudavadi comes out and says that I'm contesting for presidency, so it does look like the end, uh, that the, uh, the 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 only thing that he can fall, um, he, he can actually compromise or can accept. Uh, other than the presidency will be probably a running mate. And that is why nobody amongst these uh, four people, Kalonzo Msioka, Moses Wetangula, Musaliam Davadi, and even Gideon Moy, everybody is saying that I'll be on the ballot, I'll be contesting. It is just the other day you saw also the governor for Makweni, uh, Professor Kivuta Kibwana, being actually coronated by elders from that particular region, uh, saying that they have actually blessed him to go for the top seat. What does it tell you? These are all people who are trying to 
are actually uh, to, to, to raise their stakes, to raise the bargaining power mm -hmm. when it comes to the top seats uh, ahead of the 2022 general election. So that when you go to, uh, to Kibuta Kibwana today, the argument will be, I really wanted to go for the presidency. Or already I'm determined to go for presidency, and even my party has given me the blessings. So what is it that you're giving me so that I can shallow my ambition to support you? Mm -hmm. So I think basically that is what they are doing. But I do not believe that most of these uh, politicians are quite really serious. And uh, if you want to prove that, it is just a matter of time, about 12 or less months to 2022 general election, you'll see most of these people actually backtracking and they will be given pledges and promises of what they will give, what they will get supposedly if the coalitions that they will be forming Sarah. will win the presidency come 2022. And I think as I, I, I finalize on this, uh, the biggest prayer will as well be that BBI sells through so that more positions can be created to accommodate the wider interest, Miriam. Okay. Thank you so much. We are also joined this morning by Douglas Kirimi uh, from Meru County. Douglas, a very good morning to you. Okay, as we wait for Douglas there to join us, before we, we exit this story at our wish, there's a, a somewhere there that says that quitting NASA and abandoning Raila will also give the three Ukambani governors, Charit Ngilu of Kitui, Kivuda Kibwana of Makweni, and Alfred Mutua, no, Kivuda Kibwana, yes, of Makweni, and Alfred Mutua of Machakos, uh, the imp impetus to work with Raila. Will this not, because we've seen these three governors actually sometimes warming up to NASA leader, uh, NASA, one of the NASA, well, opposition leader, Raila Odinga, will this not be to the disadvantage of uh, Kalonzo? Tawish? Interruption, there was a call that came in. Finally, if you could just... Uh it's okay. uh, maybe repeat the question you're asking. Sorry about uh, that. A part of the story here, uh, from the story on yeah. the Star newspaper, page 7, it says quitting NASA and abandoning Raila will also give the three Kambani governors, that is Charity Ngilu, Kibuda Kibwana, and Alfred Mutua, the impetus to work with Raila. Will this not be at the detriment of uh, Kalonzo Musioka's mm -hmm. political ambitions, especially in the region? Um, one medium you see, um, it should be in the best interest of the uh, Kamba Nation or the Kamba voting bloc to get into 2022 general election as a united bloc, as a united front. Uh, because again, that uh, our politics by nature is that uh, what is it you're bringing on table? How many voters do we uh, do we need to project? How many votes are we projecting to get from a particular region? And by virtue of the command that the leaders who are leading those particular voters and that region really can uh, sway the voters to vote in favor of that particular candidate that they will be uh, actually be backing or they will be supporting. So in itself, I suppose if the Kamba people were really to have uh, um, a clear bargaining uh, front in as far as 2022 general election is concerned, they should all sit down in one house and decide that we are supporting either Kalonzo Msioka for presidency or whatever kind of direction that uh, Kalonzo Msioka wants to take us is one which we will all follow. But if they are going to be disintegrated, remember, uh, we have Kivuta Kibwana saying I'm contesting for presidency. We have uh, Alfred Mutua, Dr. Alfred Mutua of Machako saying I'll be contesting for presidency. Uh, don't be surprised that Charity Kaluki Ngilu as well could come out and say she's equal in the rest for presidency and you have Kalonzo Msioka. And probably there's another person who will come up from the same region. Uh, out of the three co counties, Miriam, we have over four people who want to become president or who will be contesting for president. In, in itself, Miriam tells you that we are not going to, we are going to have a scattered or a divided vote uh, from the lower eastern region. And I do not think it is in the best interest of the Kamba uh, nation really to go into next year's election as divided. So the only thing that will serve their interests better will be to unite behind one leader. I don't necessarily care whether it is Kalonzo Msioka, Alfred Mutua, um, Governor Governor Kivuta Kibwana or Charity Ngilu or whoever well, the case will be. But the most important thing is that they should go into 2022 general election as a united force. And even if they are going to engage any serious presidential candidate um, on how they are going to build the formation, that will actually add uh, some impetus uh, to them and even uh, give them at least some serious slots when it comes to the national cake, Miriam. Okay. Uh, thank you. Douglas, can you hear me? Very well. I think you're having a very good morning to you, Miriam. Okay. All right. Good morning. So we're looking at uh, a story on page seven of the Star newspaper, and they are talking about Kalonzo, uh, force, uh, uh, you know, facing very tough, uh, you know, um, 
options there and today he's meeting with his uh, uh, party top organs to decide on their coalition uh, future especially in nasa so that is the story that we have been looking at uh, how do you see this playing out what is likely to come out of that meeting today if we could just speculate uh medium at the end of the day I've always said that uh, uh, Stephen Caronzo Musioka, Mosalia Mutavandi, Moses Masika, Tangura, like Tawish was saying, these are people who have always directed the people of Kenya that they are going to run for office. And there is nothing that uh, uh, goes further from the truth. They have always directed the people of Kenya that they are going to run for office, and they have done uh, the same for a couple of years. Uh, what I think is going to happen, Miriam, is that they are only going to rally by the one person, and that one person is not among us, the three of them. They are going to rally among us, someone uh, uh, among us themselves, and also come together and cover a coalition with either Ray Odinga, William Ruto, or anyone else, such that the, uh, the three of them are rendered uh, leaderless and also brandless in terms of uh, gunning for presidents in William. There is none of them that can count on themselves to run for president in this country. And they win fair and square uh, because Miriam, at the end of the day, these are old politicians, the old guard who have always been carried on the backs of other politicians, and there is nothing that can go further from the truth, Miriam. These are leaders that we are not counting in terms of serious presidential aspirants. They cannot only help others realize their ambitions. Their ambitions, like I have said, are intertwined of those uh, with those of serious presidential candidates. That's why we had Joe say that uh, uh, William Ruto is shopping for a, a running mate or also coalition uh, partners from NASA uh, a brigade, or also NASA principles. So when you look at it, Miriam, they can do address meetings, they can do address of meetings, but the ethical is the same. These people are very unserious in terms of running for president. Even small children know that the three of them, the three political musketeers, cannot amount into serious presidential candidate because miriam they have shown us they can only be, be political hang-ons people that have no agenda people that can only hang around some other people and remember there is a saying that says a bug that you can scratch for yourself is better than a bug that someone has to go up so that he can scratch it for yourself for for for, for you those people karonzo musioka moses masika wetangura wickliffe mosaria mundavandi all those the three of them can only keep threatening people. For Masika Wetangura, this is a man that his presidential ambition was also uh, in 2017, 2016, 2017, was scattered by a tear gas canister around at uh, Murillo Gardens in Kakamega County. So, Miriam, I have no kind words for these Masikatiers. These are people that cannot become serious presidential candidates. They can do boardroom meetings, coffee meetings, also debates with their own parties. But at the end of the day, we know where they are ended, and they can never amount to anything on their own medium. I have no kind ones for them. They can only cope a coalition with a willing past partner and a person that can be able to take them to the next level. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And that visit by Musalim Davadi and some uh, Mount Kenya leaders over the weekend in Mount Kenya, uh, Central Kenya particularly, what do you make of that, Douglas? Medium. Musadia Mudavandi can go anywhere he wants. Even Alfred Motu has met the same, same readers. They are borrowing from each other. You go meet a few people and also go to a church. A Sunday, uh, like yesterday, where uh, Musadia Mudavandi was visiting Nandarwa, a Sunday is a day where people want to rest and they also want to listen to ideas from different people. Kenyans are very democratic. So Musadia Mudavandi can go anywhere. Miriam, today you're not here of that, whatever he calls a two-state a uh, county visit to those counties. It can only be for Sunday so that he can take pictures in church. And those people did not go because Mosaria wanted them to go. They went to church as a normal human being would go on a Sunday. In a religious country like Kenya, 80% we are Christians. These this, this, this political uh, shenanigans that are being prayed by Mosaria Mundavadi mm -hmm. cannot amount to anything, Miriam. Meeting these governors, even these governors, some of them are not going to come back, Miriam. They want relevance. They want to be seen. They have brought someone big like Mosaria Mundavadi, but their bigness cannot amount in court, Miriam, because that is not proper grammar. Mm -hmm. Their bigness in court, in politics, cannot amount to anything in politics, Miriam, because at the end of the day, how do you account for a church service that you never even organized yourself? Christians showered 
wore their own clothes and they showed up in a church and they took photos and said Nyandaru was endorsed to be president. Miriam, Musari, Musari Mondabadi should give us a break. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Sally Medeva is busy campaigning to be the president of this country in 2022. I doubt he'll give us a break. Uh, Sam also wish uh, his visit in Nyandara over the weekend. Are you reading any political uh, strategy in that? And who is likely to be behind this? <laughs> well, Miriam, thank you for that question. And um, I, I think uh, you've noticed there's a lot of um, excitement. There's a lot of attention being given to Mount Kenya uh, uh, Mount Kenya in as far as the 2022 succession is concerned. And, and Miriam, for the reason you, we all understand is that uh, Mount Kenya mostly votes as a block. And second is that they have um, the tyranny of numbers. They have big numbers that any serious uh, presidential hopeful will really want to woo uh, the voters of that particular region really to uh, vote uh, for them. And especially as we get into 2022 general election, it has not been very clear and it remains so. Uh, that probably we may not have a serious presidential candidate coming from Mount Kenya region, uh, largely because uh, you've seen President Uhuru Kenyatta has not been very keen uh, really to say that maybe it is time we should have again one of our own really uh, come and try maybe and wrestle it out or try to succeed me. Uh, in any case, it's hinted that maybe it is time to support someone outside the central Kenya uh, region, understanding that uh, central Kenya uh, as a region and uh, as a community has had about uh, three uh, presidents ever since we got independence, uh, ever since Kenya got independence. So one, Miriam, uh, it is no uh, surprise that Musalia Mudabadi and even William Ruto and every other candidate, including even Raila Odinga uh, and Kalonzo Msiok and others, are actually uh, setting uh, their eyes on central Kenya in the hope that maybe they can actually pluck uh, some, uh, some votes in that particular region to add into their uh, traditional uh, support. Uh, so that they can increase the chances of voting. But as for Musalia Mudavadi, mm -hmm. this is a person who has never been serious, unless if he wants to prove us wrong this time round. He has tried to contest in 2013. We all know how many votes he got. He didn't even manage a half a million votes out of over 10 million registered voters in the country. I think 20 million registered Kenyans as we speak today to vote, and Musalia Mudavadi could not even get uh, actually half a million of the votes. He came mm -hmm. a distant third after President Uhuru Kenyatta, who won that election, and Railo Dinga, who came... Um, of course, uh, close uh, second. So in itself tells you that Musalia Mudavadi does not really command as much support, live alone outside Kenya, even in his own uh, home county where he comes from in Vihiga, or Western Kenya, if you are to put it that way. He does not really command uh, the huge following or support in that particular region. So I think for Musalia Mudavadi, he has a long way to go. But uh, of course, Kenya being a democracy, that is it is. Anybody who wants to contest for presidency or any political seats and fields, he can move around the country and try to sell his uh, manifesto, sell his uh, ideologies to the people of Kenya. It is up to the people really to decide by the end of the day whether uh, those ideologies, those manifestos resonate well with them and whether this will be the right person really to vote for. But I do not think that Musalia Mudavadi is that serious candidate. Maybe it's just by trying just to raise his states, mm -hmm. uh, just like the other candidates who have declared themselves that they will be contesting for presidency mm -hmm. come 2022, Miriam. All right. And of course, he was accompanied by Governor Francis Kimemia and 10 members of parliament from across uh, the country and Mudavadi cautions, uh, cautioned residents. Miriam, against... Miriam, sorry about that. Sorry about that, if you allow me. I mean, that has just been that the tradition. It does not have any implication for that matter. OK. I mean, you know, the Kenyan tradition. No, I, I, want, I wanted to bring in, I wanted, uh, Tawish, I wanted to bring in yes. what uh, Kimemia said while he was there. Yes, yes. And uh, Kimemia yes, yes. recounted how Mudavadi helped him come uh, post-election violence and evacuated people who were stranded in the conflict area and uh, he continued to say that I was picked as the permanent secretary at the height of PEV and Mudavadi was vital in helping people who were stranded. He said some people had buried their keen in toilets and shallow graves and they needed to be exhumed and buried uh, decently. Kimemia said the former deputy prime minister was the best alternative uh, for the president and uh, pres uh, for the president after President Huru Kenyatta. Why would you think he will bring in the issue of post-election violence? Uh, you know, Miriam, uh, the kind of memories uh, that, uh, the kind of reminders and memories that the 2007-2008 post-fall chaos really uh, brings to the Kenyan people, most of the voters, and in this case, the central Kenya region, which bore the brunt of what happened in 2007, uh, largely, of course, uh, in the Rift Valley uh, region. And uh, in itself, when, um, of course, uh, Governor Kimemia comes out and invoke uh, invokes rather those memories of the 2007-2008. It is the one way of trying to remind the people of central Kenya 
uh, that uh, you remember what you went through because you understand one of the protagonists then uh, who is uh, Deputy President William Ruto and now contesting for presidency come 2022 is banking on the support of the Central Kenya region or the Kikuyu nation, if I should be specific. And when Kimemia comes out and reminds or invokes the memories of 2007 when we have Mdavadi, Raila, um, uh, of course William Ruto and others contesting for presidency, I think it's just trying to remind them that this probably will be a safe fair uh, compared with the other candidates. Uh, but like I tried to say earlier on, Miriam, just before you interjected, I mean, this has just but been the tradition in the Kenyan politics that even if Raila was to go to central Kenya today to go to say Nyandarwa, Kimemia will welcome him the way he has done to Mudavad and the way he will do to any other candidate. I'm not very sure whether he will do the same to William Ruto. He will give reasons as to why maybe the Mount Kenya will, who should support Raila Odinga, say, for example. He may, be, he may go to an extent of saying, you remember what Raila did to Mwai Kibaki in 2002 when he declared uh Mwai Kibaki Tosha, you remember mm -hmm. about that? Mm -hmm. And so he will just be trying to invoke those memories. So I think this is a normal culture. I've seen even uh, Governor of Machakos County, Dr. Alfred Mutua. You remember there was a time he was in shadow diplomacy, going around the counties and inside such kind of presidential kind of uh, visits and uh, trying to sell his uh, policies and presidential bid ahead of 2022. And he could even be given an, a guard of honor from the county as carries and such kind of things. So what does it tell you essentially that uh, that is the nature of the Kenyan politics? Everyone will really want to appear good and welcoming. And I think that is the kind of political tolerance that we want to see in the country, even as we head into 2022, that if you are to go to Rift Valley today, if Raila Odinga was to go there, in as much as they do not agree with, with uh, William Ruto, maybe uh, principally, but this is a presidential candidate who should be allowed to move around the country in every part of the country to sell his ideology and manifesto to the people of Kenya without much hindrances or much hurdles and obstacles coming from those particular regions. Miriam. Okay. Thank you. Douglas, is there anything you uh, want to add to, uh, you know, Kimemia uh, evoking the, the uh, post-election violence, uh, you know, memories? Um, what is this, uh, you know, supposed to achieve, if at all? Miriam, for Kimemia, who was in public service when post-election, uh, who was the head of public service, if I'm not wrong, uh, and secreted to the cabinet when uh, post direction violence broke out in this country. He cannot be able to allude to the fact that there was post direction violence and also trying to invoke demons of post direction violence. There is no difference between Kememia and uh, those people that keep um, approaching the count of ICC and all those things that happened in the past when others to forge a future ahead. Kememia wants to just bring us to post direction uh, violence in this country. We know that Kemenia somehow mismanaged the situation and also the politicians also mismanaged the situation in this country. And there's some parts of this country broke into post-direction violence. So Kemenia should also give the people of Kenya a break because Miriam, when we have readers who keep revisit, uh, revisiting the past, it is true that uh, I have uh, problems with the issue of 2007, 2008, and I have an issue with how uh, witnesses were tampered with and all that. That is a whole different ball game. But for Kememia to be able to do that for political marriage or maybe to invoke some demons of the past, it is very uncalled for. And Kememia should be called out. Amiriam, at the end of the day, we need to be able to tell each other the truth. This is the time that we need to be able to forge a future ahead. Even as we seek closure, even as we seek to be able to arrest the demons of the past, and also people, the perpetrators, people that participated in that, so that they can face the full wrath of the law. But Miriam, for Kemenia to keep talking about post-direction violence, even me, Miriam, who would want to find closure, who would want victims of post-direction violence to find closure, Miriam? I don't keep talking about it. People from Rift Valley do not talk about it. People that suffered under the hands of bandits, in economic bandits in Rift Valley do not talk about it. This is a thing that we want to forget. But Kememia, as a, as a man who lives in a grass uh, house, he should be able to give people of Kenya a break mm -hmm. and also pray to God alone that God helps this country to heal and move forward such that when we are seeking for the next president, because presidential elections are the only thing, Miriam, that uh, invoke post-election violence in this country. We have never had even in these by-elections that we are having, including the one that we shall have here in Kiangu Ward. There, is, there will be no post-election violence here. Okay. Even as we seek to, 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 to get or elect another president in this country, mm -hmm. people like Kemenia should restrain themselves from revisiting the demons of the past.
All from right. the visiting and history that we are trying to forget, even as we seek closure for the people that suffered under the hands of the post-election perpetrators and people that participated in the same media. Because right. at the end of the day, mm -hmm. what the people of Kenya want is a closure and a no return to the past that they want to forget, Miriam. All for Kemenia, right. it is a shame that you can be able to invoke demons of the past, especially a post-election demon of 2007-2008, Miriam. Well. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, and we'll have uh, uh, that conversation and more at 2 p.m. when we shall be looking at the issue of ICC, uh, which now is still very much present and alive uh, with us as uh, Gishiru, uh, you know, I think now his case will start at the ICC. On the standard newspaper, Jubilee Night Talks to Clip Ruto Party. The story is on page six of uh, the standard newspaper. Strung by a string of losses in Juja and Kiamba constituency by election, Jubilee members of parliament allied to President Uru Kenyatta met on Friday to plot a major comeback. The five hour meeting held at a city hotel saw MPs engage in candid conversations on the party's dwindling fortunes, with those present agreeing on the need to quickly turn the tide. To achieve this, the MPs resolved to begin a reactivation of the party to combat the rising stature of the United Democratic Alliance, a party linked to Deputy President William Bruto. Is it too late for that, Samuel Tawish? Well, Miriam, um, it may not necessarily be too late. You remember they say in politics a day is, um, a, a day is um, a big. And therefore, when these people come out and try to think about um, how to, uh, uh, to renew the party, how to give the party new impetus, how to galvanize uh, support and even those members of the Jubilee Party who are disgruntled, how they are going to address uh, their grievances. I do not quite think it's uh, very late, only that uh, this has to be done in a genuine way. It has to be done in a way that really, not really targeting on uh, uh, the, the diffusing Deputy President William Ruto's, uh, say, gaining uh, popularity or momentum um, in the central region. But I think it should be informed by the fact that we need to, to have a better alternative we have we need to have a force uh, that is really anchored on ideology and principle uh, one which seeks to bring a new change in terms of uh, uh, fresh leadership and also ensure that a person is a person or a grouping uh, that is very keen to provide good services for the people of kenya I, I, to me i think that should be the driving factor behind this kind of uh, um, of course, uh, realignments as we head into 2022 and more so even as the politicians try to build up their respective uh, parties and their voting blocks as we head into 2022. It should not be informed by the fact that we need to defeat Deputy President William Ruto. We are making it look like William Ruto has already made it, uh, he's already become president or is already the person who is difficult really to uh, to beat or to challenge. Uh, I think we need to shift this conversation. We need to shift the narrative uh, into thinking how uh, that we are coming into this race as Jubilee, we are coming into this race really to provide the best alternative for the people of Kenya in as far as leadership is concerned. In any case, it will be a continuity of what President Uru Kenyatta has been doing from 2013 to 2017 and now to 20 as we head into 2022. So the person or Jubilee as a party, when they get into 2022 general election, uh, if they go it alone if or if they will be forming a coalition with any other uh, political formations, it will be about the continuity or the continuation of what President Huru Kenyatta has been able to do for the last uh, almost uh, 10 years uh, now. And in itself, therefore, Miriam, it is uh, a foundation on itself. You only but need to continue uh, with it. It's not like the greenhorns that you are having who have to really start even building their parties from the grassroots, uh, try to have offices in the grassroots, even to try and register news uh, to register supporters. Um, before they can begin, of course, selling uh, their parties to the uh, to the supporters in the country. So for Jubilee, I don't think it's very late. Uh, they only but need to get serious this time around. I think they've been sleeping on the job. Uh, most of them have not been that serious. If they are going to be serious this time around, Miriam, I, I'm telling you for sure that they're going to turn the tables. Remember, some of the Jubilee stalwarts have come out and said they've not been campaigning for the last four years, whilst the opponents have been campaigning ever since. Uh, we concluded the 2017 general election. President Uru Kenyatta and those who support him have been concentrating on service delivery, on fulfilling the pledges and uh, the promises they made to the people of Kenya. While the other side have been very busy campaigning and trying to actually sell their, their, their candidate's ambition uh, for 2022. And in itself, they may have gotten some ground, 
But again, when Jubilee hits the ground, of course, with other politicians, I'm, I'm telling you for mm -hmm. sure, Miriam, that they are going to turn the tables. That one, you can take it to the bank. Mm -hmm. Douglas. Uh, Douglas, uh, the meeting, uh, wanting the Jubilee party, wanting to, to clip on uh, DP's Tutu party and its popularity in Mount Kenya region especially, uh, is Jubilee likely to you know, revitalize itself and perhaps gain ground in terms of its popularity in the Mount Kenya region? Okay, so I think Douglas has a, a left of the conversation. We've been having a bit of yeah. a talk. Yes. I have not heard the, the, the beginning of your, your, of your question. I <laughs> Okay. Now, the the issue of Jubilee Night talks to Clip Ruto's party and that they met on Friday to try to strategize on how to, I think, revive the Jubilee party. And earlier on, I asked Tawish if uh, it's too late for now, uh, because as we know right now, of course, Mount Kenya region is deeply divided and UDA has really gained ground there. Uh, is, is it too late for Jubilee? And uh, can it still gain ground on its popularity in Mount Kenya region? Miriam, thank you. Thank you for that question. And uh, sorry for my previous technical inch. Go ahead. But the, the problem that we are having a sitting president. Yes, Miriam? I'm saying go ahead. Uh, two minutes. <laughs> thank you. What, what we have today, Miriam, is a huge problem that we keep underestimating the Jubilee Party of Kenya is the ruling party in this country, and we have a sitting president. We have members of parliament who have refused to be able to leave the Jubilee Party. And at the end of the day, mm -hmm. Miriam, we are, we, are, we are experiencing people who do not want to run away from Jubilee Party of Kenya, and the people who continue undermining Jubilee Party of Kenya. At the end of the day, what we are having is a party that can be able to revitalize it Self, including in Mount Kenya region. We have people, Miriam, who are voting for Jubilee Party candidates across Mount Kenya and across the country. And why would the people tell us Jubilee Party is not dead? What I have always said has, happened, has been happening in Jubilee, these are internal structures, these are internal mechanisms that have not worked before that should be revitalized. It's not the party or its supporters in this country, Miriam. So at the end of the day, we are having a people that continue undermining a ruling party that has a president, and this is a party with a lot of huge potential. Why would ODM or NASA or anyone be willing to talk to Jubilee if Jubilee is dead? I don't believe my party, Jubilee Party of Kenya, is dead. This is a formidable party, and this is a party to watch, because as soon as they restructure the internal organs and they restructure everything that is about Jubilee Party, we need to, to, to be able to get people who are not for the good of the party, people who are draining the party, the Fatima Manifesto, and the vision and the mission of the party. As soon as we get rid of these people, Miriam, the party will be soon on a path to reclaim its lost glory, the perceived, perceived lost glory. Because I don't believe our party that has a president and so many members of parliament, members of county assembly, uh, senators in this country, and governors, is said to be dead, Miriam. If this party is dead, we'll be seeing mass, 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 mass walk out from Jubilee Party as they seek to entrench themselves in other parties and also seeking by election, uh, 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 seeking by election uh, mandates to be able to run away from Jubilee Party. I believe my party is strong. Jubilee Party of Kenya is going to come back, Miriam, and maybe the next president will be from Jubilee Party. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. And that marks the end of our show this morning. Thank you, Douglas Kirimi. Thank you, Samuel Tawish. Uh, we shall be playing an interview uh, Dr. Matanga had with one of the local television stations. Uh, here. And then later on at 11, we shall come back with the editor's memo. My name is Miriam Ugutu. Good morning.
this must be our goal and our guide. And all that we strive for as a human family, dignity and hope, progress and prosperity, depends on peace. But peace depends on us.